so um, yeah we... uh, welcome everyone uh, i'm anish banerji i'm the founder of think wildlife fund foundation and we're a you uh, we're a completely student led ngo a wildlife ngo which are aimed at raising awareness about wildlife and we have various other projects i will send a link to our website for you to check um, to read more about us so today is the first webinar of our series it's done by samia she is going to talk about uh, conservation uh, elephant con conservation in sri lanka so uh, this session is recorded um, and if you have any questions please leave it for the end or you can write in a chat or you can uh, just raise your hand in the end and ask it'll be about 30 to 40 minutes and we'll have about 10 15 minutes for questions at the end yep so samia do you want to uh, start okay hi thanks anish for um introducing me and inviting me for this webinar. Um, so my name is Samiha Zele, and I'll be speaking about um, elephants in Sri Lanka and with the focus on train elephant collisions. I worked on a research project at Asian Nature Conservation Foundation in IASC Bangalore a couple of years ago. Um, and I'll be speaking about like the research I did with them. Um, the project that I worked on um, about Sri Lanka train off collisions was funded by Asian Development Bank. Um, and yeah, I uh, graduated from the University of Delaware in 2018. So just mentioned that. All right, so this is, I just wanted to put out all the people who were involved in this project. It wasn't just me alone. Um, I worked with a research, uh, senior research scientist, Dr. Mukti Roy, um, the maps that you see on my presentation, they are created by a GIS consultant, Sunipa Chatterjee. And yeah, like some of the report I worked on was created by Enemy Stream. Um, we also interviewed some experts and like the photo credit for some of the uh, photos on the presentation. Um, these are some of the people who have, have contributed. So yeah. All right, I'll be talking about um, just the goals of, like the main goals of the uh, research that I did. Um, then Asian elephants in Sri Lanka, the status of train elephant collisions and um, mitigation methods and recommendations. So the main project objective was about like understanding, you know, what is going on with uh, elephants in Sri Lanka. So like, especially, like these are Asian elephants. Um, and real understanding, like there have been a lot of train elephant collisions uh, causing deaths to the, these elephants. So, like understanding how is that impacting uh, the elephants and like elephant population in general, and then what are some uh, railway hotspots, like where where is wildlife uh, colliding with the trains? And then I'll also be uh, mentioning some of the ways to like conduct field studies. All right, so main part that I was working on and that I'll be speaking about now is about re like the research and literature studies. So this is about like elephants in Sri Lanka as well as train elephant collisions in Sri Lanka. Um, we did a lot of data analysis and some of the main things were like the GIS maps that were created as well as data from Sri Lanka Railways Wildlife Conservation uh, Department in Sri, in Sri Lanka, as well as like uh, the newspapers and like independent research that I had the opportunity to do. And then as well as mentioning some mitigation methods based on other case studies, as well as what can be done in the future. All right, so first up, um, Asian elephants in Sri Lanka. So elephants have been revered in Sri Lanka as well as like other Asian countries for a long time. And they play a important role in shaping the culture, religion, economy, uh, conflicts and conflicts. Um, and they have been historically uh, revered. They've been protected in Sri Lanka since the 17th century. And uh, during the colonial period, they were um, like, killed and killed for war, slaughter. Um, they were used also for export to zoos. And there, there was a time period up until the 1800s um, that elephants were, like there were so many elephants in Sri Lanka that the government allowed them to be killed to, um, because they were kind of, they were also a threat to humans. 
Um, so the government actually encouraged uh, like destruction, like killing elephants and they granted rewards for doing so. So because of this, about 5,000 elephants were systematically killed over like 10, over like 10 years, yeah. So there are 15 specific areas where elephants are found in Sri Lanka. And the total land area of this is about 9.3% or 6,121 kilometers square. And uh, during the past two decades, 200 years, the development has seriously impacted elephant populations and also decreased their populations by like over 67%. Um, and different over the past like three, four decades statistics, um, I mean, researchers, as well as like Department of Wildlife Conservation have done different censuses, um, trying to understand what the population is of the current elephants. Um, and the latest that we have is uh, done by the Department of Wildlife Conservation in 2012, where they found that there were more than 5,879 wild elephants. So then we come to elephant habitat, like even when we're thinking about trains um, and where elephants, it, it also, you're thinking about like elephant, where elephants are siding, where trains are passing through because that impacts, you know, uh, how they will be getting injured or killed. So when you look at elephant habitat, you're thinking about like the basic requirements such as, um, you know, elephants need a lot of foraging. They're mixed breeders, sorry, mixed feeders, um, where they both graze and browse. And they spend about 12 to 18 hours um, feeding. And um, they, the highest, yes, they spend about 50. And then they eat, you know, like, over 100 different plant species. So one of the main things they need is like this availability to forage and eat as well as like water. And this depends like the location where they will be found also depends to the climate and the topography of that area. So then where um, in Sri Lanka, where can you find the most elephants? Like the best habitat is around, um, is where there are dry forests savanna woodland ha habitats, open canopy forests, um, disturbed and early successional forests, as well as like forest edges. So a good proportion of um, elephants are actually found outside of the protected areas. So it actually leads to a lot of conflict, like human elephant conflict. Um, so some of the greatest challenges to protecting elephants uh, involves like just the destruction of habitat because of development. So because there's more people, you need more places to live. Um, and it creates more conflict, like where um, the term human elephant conflict comes from um, basically hu human wildlife conflict, like, you know, elephants are a part of the wildlife. So what happens is elephants come to agricultural areas like, you know, raiding crops or they'll like roam around in the villages, which leads to them killing, um, which causes like a lot of, uh, it can cause like traumatic events for humans. Like if they are, um, it can, it's basically, a it can be a threat to humans. Like humans can find the elephants a threat um, and elephants have killed a lot of like humans. And it, this there's this retaliation because um, because humans are being killed, like you know families are mad, like upset about it, um, and then that like what million dollars like millions of dollars of crops have also been destroyed, um, on our, because elephants are raiding the crops and eating these farmers and the people who are like basically growing crops, um, their land, a lot of their uh, agriculture is destroyed, their income is destroyed because of the elephants. So there's this constant retaliation, um, which leads to this concept called human elephant conflict. Um, so when we talk about human elephant conflict, there's different ways or different forms of conflict. Um, as in different ways why um, elephants are being killed and how they're being killed. Uh, one of them, like one of them is obviously because of uh, crop raiding. Um, others include, I'll 
um, yeah, so others is like train accidents, they get shot, they're electrocuted, um, they can be poisoned. There's this concept of hakapata, and it's basically where people will uh, take an explosive and put it in a vegetable in the hopes of like giving it in the view of an elephant. And because of that, like if an elephant eats it, obviously like it gets injured or it can get killed. Um, so then there are accidents. These are just like some of the ways. So now um, one of the main reasons also like, you know, habitat destruction, there's less place for elephants to live and they're constantly in more and more conflict. So based on like the uh, Department for Wildlife Conservation in Sri Lanka has been considering different methods for kind of mitigating this problem. Um, this would be like over the last 70 years, one of the things that they did is try to fence in the elephants um, near the, this thing. So where the protected areas are in Sri Lanka, they were trying to use like, like specific, specific these fences, but found out that, you know, this is really just failing because the elephants will like walk outside the fence. That's not really where their main home range is. So instead, it's that this is kind of failing. So, so another new approach, um, this is based on, it's called community-based electric fencing, wh where, um, yeah, like over the years, so where like uh, the locations where elephants have been more prevalent in the, I think it's in the north, it's in the north, north, northern Sri Lanka, um, basically, this is collaborated with the organization called Center for Conservation Research, as well as the Department for Wildlife Conservation. There's about 50 community-based electric fences that have been created that have actually, this new technique has been started in 2019-2020, and it's helped to decrease the conflicts. So in another area in... Um, yeah, in, in two other areas, it, the two districts in uh, Sri Lanka, they have tried to use gun distribution. Government has provided gun distribution as a way to reduce this conflict, but it's really, um, there's a greater chance of escalation. The gun distribution occurred like around 20, in 2020, um, but I don't have much details about it. So here is just, um, I've created like two different, when I did my research, we focused on different, like one thing we looked at is the different causes of mortality. And we've just split up like, you know, between 2005 to 2010, um, what are the causes of mortality as well as what, what it led to between 2012 to 2018. So it's interesting. Um, this is just a pie chart to give you a better graphical view. Um, so the highest between 2005 to 2010, uh, like 50% of the reason why elephants were dying was because of gunshots. Then it was electrocution and then train accidents was about 8%. Um, and then the data changed a bit between 2012 to 2018, where um, we do have unknown causes, um, just where there's no like, you know, we don't know how the elephant died. Um, and after that, gunshots was about 19% of the reason for deaths. Um, Hakapatas was about 22%, and train elephant collisions was about 10%. And when this was like based on different recordings, the number of elephants that died between 2005 to 2010 was um was uh, um 1154 elephants died um as a part of this study i mean what was studies was that about almost 1200 elephants died but then between 2012 to 2018 about uh 1756 deaths occurred uh elephant deaths occurred so one thing we have noticed is there has, when you look at train elephant collisions, 
um, there has been an increase in train elephant collisions. And the thing is that like, I think the Sri Lanka railways, uh, it started, um, I mean, the creation of the Sri Lanka railways was around the 1950s when it originated. Um, and then, you know, after that, by the 1960s, like we started having train elephant collisions in Sri Lanka. And the thing is with more development, um, the problem just got worse. It kept getting worse. And as you can see, like one of the reasons why there has been a spike in train elephant collisions also because there's less habitat. Um, and in gen, like overall in Asia, the mortality rates have been increasing. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so now coming to focus on train elephant collisions. Um, sorry, some of these images might be a bit gruesome, but this is pretty much how, like, what happens that the elephant comes under, like, elephant comes in the way of the train, and um, a lot of times the driver is not able to stop the train in time, or he does not see the elephant. So there's different reasons why this problem has constantly been occurring. Um, and you might think like in, in, the, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to be talking about like incidences. And that's just like when one, there's one incident where there is a collision with an, a train and an elephant. But like when I talk about an incident, it can have more than one elephant that has died. So um, yeah, I just wanted to talk, to say that. So what is this? Yeah, there are 13 main railway stations, railway lines in Sri Lanka. And vegetation is important. Like, you know, elephants are coming. Uh, we, what, one of the things we did is focus on the different regions along the railway line where there was vegetation, like different types of vegetation. So basically what what kind of food, like what type of vegetation um, do elephants come to graze at or browse at um, and what is found close in Sri Lanka along the railway lines. So by putting this correlation, you can kind of understand or get a better idea of like, you know, what is attracting the elephants. And what, like, why are they coming here when there's also opportunity for food in other places? So these railway lines are mainly cutting across forests and agricultural development. So it's kind of also like the um, railway, the lines, the networks are also found right around where the elephants reside because um, elephants have been like edge, like species, edge species. So they're in between, like just around the forest as well as the human developments. So one thing we wanted to focus on are what are the hotspots or where are the main places where elephants are being killed. And if you can like, you know, analyze that, then you can kind of take the next step of what we can do in those areas because it is a very broad problem. Um, and you need to like, just kind of analyze one by one what is possible to do. Um, so while comparing vegetation along the railways, uh, the main three that um, you would come across where there's the most vegetation would be the Trinko Mali Railway Network Line, um, then the Talia, Talia Manar Railway Network, and the Northern Jaffna Line. So Trinko Mali um, has dense forests on one side and agriculture on the other. Um, Talia Lamar, Talia Manar has medium dense forests and grasslands and riverine vegetation. And Northern Jaffna has forest cover, grassland, riverine, a medium dense forest cover. So these are just like vegetation um, that can be found in these main railway networks. And then Northwestern and Western Sri Lanka are the most developed areas. So the railway lines in those areas are the most developed and more or less like in the very big cities, like you wouldn't find as many um, elephants just like randomly roaming around like in more rural areas, so. Okay, so here's just a better look at, 
you know, what this map looks like. I wanted to share that with you. Just the elephant distribution. Elephant distribution just means like where elephants can be found. Um, so based on like the mapping, we can see that um, Northern Jaffna railway line, uh, Trincomalee railway line, and Batikaloa railway line are the like most important or the ones with the most vegetation where elephants can be found. So, um, okay. All right. So when we were looking at the research, we did it like focusing on spatial variation and temporal variation. So basically spatial as in like the locations and temporal as in like the time period. So the time period we split it between, like we looked at like all train elephant collisions between 2008 to 2020, but it was split um, by about six, like, you know, every six period, six years. So we looked at 2008 to 2014 and then 2014 to 2020. And this research project was actually done in 2020. That's when I worked on it. Um, so it's like not complete. The data for 2020 is not complete. Um, the data was gathered, like we got our results from the Department of Wildlife Conservation in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Railways, as well as like independently, uh, I looked at where, um, train like you know, news reports and YouTube videos where there were uh, reports of train elephant collisions, and then we created different data sets to put it together and create a sort of analysis, and really understand like what is going on when it comes to train elephant collisions. Um, yeah. So for like future references, um, when I mentioned casualty, that means like elephant deaths as well as elephants injured, like number of elephants injured as well as number of elephant deaths. Um, so yeah. All right. So when we mapped, um, we understood that the main uh, railways where elephants were foraging and where the train elephant collisions were occurring was the Northern Jaffna railway line, uh, railway network line, which is where half of the actual wildlife crossings were present. And um, it was also where the most collisions happened or it was the most prone. Um, Northern Jaffna has deciduous forests with seasonal cropland, evergreen forest, cold grass, cold grassland and savanna, seasonal tropical forest, irrigated cropland and water bodies. So another like reason why elephants are coming and crossing these lines is for the water and like being nearby. Um, and then the other ones are Trincomalee and Batikaloa railway network where there are also seasonal tropical forests, deciduous forests with seasonal cropland, <coughs> irrigated cropland and water bodies. So these things allow the movement and more opportunity. Um, and then also Talia Monar Railway Network is, sh it's shorter, but there are certain, some patches of uh, deciduous forests and shrubs along with seasonal tropical forests and cropland and few water bodies. So all like these main three railway networks are where most of the, as you can see, um, they're most likely like, you know, this is where the, um, collisions are happening and why is because there's the most vegetation and the things that the elephants like to eat that is what is you know somewhat at least driving them to come to these areas okay so now when you look uh historically um just looking at the numbers you know between like the number of collisions happening but from 2008 to 2020. So we kind of did a graph, create a graph based on our results, um, like our, our analysis and results, um, focusing on when we, as I mentioned earlier, when we did this, there were two ways, like the data recorded is mainly uh, based on the data that we got. So like, you know, we requested Sri Lanka rail, yeah, Sri Lanka Railways, as well as the Department of Wildlife Conservation through Asian Development Bank to kind of get this data of like how many collisions have happened, train elephant collisions have happened. So one of the ways, one thing, that's one thing we did. And we also independently looked at news reports um, and like videos 
as to what else can be found about train off and collisions and like where things are happening. So based on the data that was recorded, there were 114 train off and collisions um, let's see, where there were 146 casualties. Um, and then the elephants, so between this time period, between 2008 to 2020, um, there were a total of 99 elephant deaths and 47 elephants were injured. Um, so this is based on um, the data that was recorded and with the additional data that we incorporated, total number of incidences went up to 121 and overall, overall casualties was 159. So remember casualties is usually is deaths and injuries. Um, so some of the greatest um, percentage of the most, like the greatest years um, where the most casualties and deaths and injuries happened was between 2011, was in 2011, 2016, and 2018. So. Sorry, one second. Okay, so we looked at, when we were looking at the railway trucks, we also observed like the railway line, the number of incidences, casualties, and um, total casualties happening, including like deaths and um, injuries. So we looked at the segments state and stations as well. Here I've just mentioned like the railway line and the segment. So between, 2008 to 2013, we found out that Trincomalee railway line has the greatest number of train elephant collisions. And the one, the segment with the highest number of collisions is Gal Oya Kantale segment. Um, between 2014 to 2020, Batikaloa railway line has the most, uh, Batikaloa as well as Trincomalee have the highest number of train elephant collisions. Um, and Gal Oya Batikaloa segment has the most incidents um, in the Batikaloa railway line and within Trincomalee railway line, Ma Maho Gal Oya segment has the most um, incidences, most deaths. All right, so this is all just numbers, but what's important to also understand is like, why, why are elephants here? Like, why are they standing in the way? And like, why are trains colliding with elephants? Like, there's only so much you can do with numbers, but you also have to understand like the qualitative data that comes along with it. So that would, what happened, what was done was in, I believe 2018, um, a detailed investigation was carried out uh, where, uh, the researchers found out that there were it was the trains were colliding with elephants because of locomotive tra train related problems, site related problems, and driver related problems. So locomotive locomotive like issues with the train site, as in like location um, where they were driving, and just driver related as like some problems that drivers were facing. So then also a part of this, the train drivers were also interviewed and asked like, why, why do you think this is happening? And they mentioned that it was due to like a lack of visibility. So especially in the dark um, where many of the incidences were happening, the drivers are not able to tell, like recognize the elephants in time. They're not able to pull the brakes and the headlights are also not intensive enough. It's not bright enough for the elephants, for the drivers to be able to tell that, you know, there's an elephant and you need a break. And then again, why are elephants being driven to these areas is because of the vegetation. The thick vegetation is also causing like, you know, poor maintenance and uh, it's coming in the way of the drivers. So they also cannot like view the, um, the elephants in time. And also people are sometimes like some of the passengers are, you know, throwing the garbage um, and littering. So that also will attract the elephants. So those are some of the main reasons why, like, you know, from a, like a human perspective, from a train's perspective, why are, are the collisions happening? And yeah, okay. And then why are the elephants getting on the lines? Like, that is another thing to consider. 
um, and some some I you know some research was done with elephant experts, and they mentioned so elephant expert Rohan Rijasina said that you know it's like certain periods of the periods of the year, um, during the northeast monsoon season, the elephants have these gatherings in Mineri Mineria and Kodula water tanks. Um, where these are like big water reservoirs. So they have these real, like the elephants gather um, in large groups. Um, and when they're coming, like they're also coming back during this time. So like when they're crossing to these water tanks, um, could these collisions are happening. And then another researcher, um, actually he's the director general, of, the former director general of Department of Wildlife Conservation, uh, Dr. Sumit Pilapatia, he said that the elephants can definitely like sense these vibrations, but they're still not getting off them. And one of the reasons is like when it when it's just a single male uh, elephant, they will usually get off um, and wait till the vehicle moves, but like the herds coming together um won't move they'll just like all stop especially like if there's a baby if it's baby like a young calf elephant will stop in the middle then the entire group will stop in the middle and if they stop and the train is not able to stop in time that causes more like deaths more elephant deaths or injuries um and what really needs to happen is that you know we don't know enough about why elephant why elephants are really stopping on the railway lines, especially like when they have really good sense of vibration and sense of hearing. So basically more research really needs to be done on why this is happening from an elephant's point of view. All right, so what has been done so far, the most important, like the mitigation methods as well as like future recommendations. So, um, the Department of Wildlife Conservation and the Sri Lanka Railways, um, they've definitely, like they've worked hand in hand to kind of combat this problem. Um, here's some elephants. So on the left is just an elephant um, cause, you know, which died or was injured due to a train elephant collision. And on the right, I've just, given a picture of some elephants enjoying water. Um, this is actually in Pinawala Nature Park. It's it's a site in Sri Lanka. So yeah. So some solutions. There was a committee that was created called the Committee to Prevent Elephant Deaths by Train Elephant Deaths by Train Collisions, um, which was with Sri Lanka Railways. Um, Department of Wildlife Conservation, a volunteer student named whose name is Irish Perara, as well. Um, yeah, so they created a committee um, with I think other experts as well, and they suggested like they did some analysis and research to understand like you know identify the hotspots, which are the north and east railway routes. So they suggested to implement, like, you know, implement one speed limits for railway lines, um, unraveling narrow bushes surrounding the railway up to 30 meters for drivers to clearly visualize the road, construction of roads above mountain hills surrounding the railway for elephants to cross. So basically, um, speed limits will definitely help as well as clearing up the uh, bushes along the tracks. Um, and there's... Uh, as well as like a new type of technology called, um, they basically wanted to, they were suggesting to install circuits near elephant passes on railway lines and alarms also connected to stay away from the tracks. So basically by creating a device which will alarm people as well as the elephants when there are elephants nearby the tracks um, is a specific type of technology that they were suggesting. And then as well as some basic methods um, that the committee suggested includes like just clearing shrubs 30 meters along either side of the railway track, enforcing the speed limits, building paths for elephant crossings. So basically where, um, which allows like an overpass or underpass would allow elephant to, um, you know, go through that instead of crossing the track, um, as well as like removing, removal of fences where, at where, 
where elephants enter. So what has been done so far, previously what I mentioned, it was just like some suggestions. Um, so what has been done so far, the wildlife department has made, uh, I think it's actually the Sri Lanka railway department, um, has, um, you know, created awareness about train elephant collisions to drivers. Um, they have erected signs to warn them from a distance, also provide expertise, um, provide awareness. So then there's a suggestion of creating um, thermal cameras in trains. However, this has been known to like not be really viable because um, a lot of times this camera just showed rocks for like because of the heat and the drivers can also like can't also keep an eye on these cameras. And then other suggestions or other things that have been done were like the wildlife department officers have been patrolling areas where train off and collisions have occurred, um, especially near the corridors and passes. Um, there is also, so there's the SMS hotline. So if people notice that elephants are nearby, um, they can notify the respective departments on where they have seen the elephants and just kind of create an alarm. Um, also, uh, these railway sleepers have been filled with metal, allowing elephants to cross easily and have, and um, the implementation of powerful headlights. Okay, so, all right, so these are just some future suggestions that were um, created or that we suggested to Asian Development Bank um, on like what can be done on the ground to get a better idea of the, um, like what's happening with train elephant collisions. Um, so this includes, these are just like recommendations for uh, ground data collection. So the research work that was done for this project, it happened in 2020, so during COVID. So it no one was like able to travel and I didn't, like no one went to Sri Lanka. It was all based on like literature studies. So this is like for the future. So what can be done? Um, so just indirect science surveys as well as stakeholder interviews and data collection records, and then um, camera trap surveys. So this is just like, like for the future reference. Um, so yeah, and then a better plan. This is just a plan um, on how to go about these things. So this concludes what I have to share. So do you guys have questions? Uh, if you have a question, just uh, unmute yourself and ask, or if you want, you can put a message in the chat. Yeah, I don't think anyone has questions. So thanks, Samira, for that. Okay, uh, yeah, no questions. So thanks for the session. Uh, okay. So Dhruvesh has a question. Oh, okay, you can type yeah. it in. Uh, or... uh, Dhruvesh, just unmute yourself and ask. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the session. Uh, I just wanted to ask that how did you plan out your project and what was your I mean, this could be a silly question, but how did you, uh, what was your uh, research question on this project? Um, okay, so the research, so, okay, wait. See, this is, all right, so see what happened is it, it wasn't like a thesis or anything like that. You can see the research question is like, you know, like why are train elephant collisions happening in Sri Lanka? Like, what is the status of Asian elephants in Sri Lanka? And what is the impact of train elephant collisions? Um, so it this project was more, okay, what happened is Asian Development Bank, um, they basically fund different projects. It's a huge, uh, I think it's like a multinational bank. Um, so they had published a okay. So they had um published a tender 
for the need to study a uh, study, the study, like, you know, they had published a tender for the need to conduct a study to determine the status of Asian elephants and the impact of railways. And um, over for Sri, Sri Lanka railways, um, ADB has given about a $160 million loan, right? And so basically Asian Nature Conservation Foundation, we, um, when I was working with them, they, it, it, we like read it, we, I, like the senior scientists I was working with, like, you know, created a uh, proposal and basically applied for this tender. And then we got selected. So I hope that, I know that I'm, I hope that, I'm, I, what was the second question? The one, the one. Yeah, that, that was my question. Like, okay. okay. Um, yeah, so. And uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, and when you, uh, you know, you said that uh, the thermal cameras were, did not work. And also you mentioned that the elephants, uh, generally the calves of the elephants, they used to stop in between the tracks uh, while the train was arriving and they didn't move. So I I think this, uh, this question can be a, just a random throw. Uh, what, is your perception about this particular behavior of the, you know, the elephant? Because generally what happens is when the, uh, the trains, the tracks being there for a lot of years now, the animal should have been, you know, adapted to that kind of environment and they should have moved out. But still, if it is happening, then what do you think is the reason behind this kind of behavior? Um. So this is... I think purely based on like some things I remember that I've read, part of it is because I think if it's like a lot of times what happens or has happened, I think when I was like reading it, um, is it would be like a mother and a calf and the mother won't really like leave the calf alone. I believe it has to do with like the elephants being very empathetic and like they're not going to leave the rest of their herd behind. Like if someone is not crossing, they'll maybe they're like, you know, trying to I'd push them, but the the one on the track is traumatized or just like not able to move. Um, definitely it's something that needs like it, it also goes into like elephant behavior. So like more research needs to be done. Um, there's only so much like, you know, that the current data and the numbers are saying, but like more observations need to be done to kind of get a better idea. Um, and that's difficult because. It's not like, you know, you can keep them, keep elephants in a lab and kind of like test what's going on in their mind. It just needs to be like more observational. Um, so that that is just my opinion. I believe it has to do with like the way like the elephant, like the entire herd is like a little small family. So they don't leave one person behind. And for some reason, once one person is stopping and the entire group is stopping. And what happens is like more than one elephant gets dragged into the train accident. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, someone asked... I think Teja Suni has a question also. Yes, hi, Zamina. Hi. Uh, I have a few questions. So you were looking mostly at maps right for the land use uh, vegetation cover and things like that is there any resolution you looked at away from a track or, or did that feed into your analysis in some way like how how far away are these vegetations from your track or uh, do they influence away from? That away from the railway track yeah so i guess i'm not sure like uh, see, I'm using like the creation of maps was like one part um, mm -hmm. and we were more or less trying to see if I can here. Okay, we were more or less like kind of mapping around like it would be like in many areas. It's like the vegetation is along the railway lines. Um, so basically it's coming in the way, like the, because mm -hmm. of, like, you know, when the railway through. line was created, 
that area, the forest was removed or destroyed. So the railway line can go on, but they didn't like, you know, it's not very, it's not a very developed area. So only certain areas where there is high development or is where there's no forest. Um, but yeah. the, like, you know, the other areas like Tringomali, Talia Lamar, Northern Jaffna, um, most of it is like covered with just forest, grass line, forest, like different kinds of forest. But we didn't, like, I think it was just really next to, and the GIS part was just one part of the research that I did, uh, or creation of maps. Um, but a lot of the project was actually, um, like, literature studies. And, and No, that's great. Are they, uh, since you got data for a previous accident that's from uh, the government, right? Or the forest department? Uh, yeah, so... Know? Yeah, so, Department of Wildlife Conservation, Sri Lanka Railways. We got it through Asian Asian Development Bank. So one of the spe specialists that uh, was involved um, in ADB was, I think she provided us with the data. Could you, um, uh, could you notice any patterns in that? Because I work in uh, north, Northeast of India on the same issue. And oh, what we find here is, most of the accidents which happen, the collisions which happen are uh, from September to January or February. And that's it. And it's only during harvest season, during the winters, things like that. Is there any stuff, uh, pattern that you could figure from uh, such a thing? I think we, we didn't um, really look at, we, as far as I know, we didn't really look at like the days and times and, you know analysis and analyze like that time like the time period or the months um let me see if I do know what what like in the future one of the things they've been thinking about is like looking at the different monsoon seasons and understanding how monsoon the different monsoons in Sri Lanka like impact the um elephants and the way they're crossing I know it has a yeah, what drives their movement to the movement yeah the movement is also related to the monsoon pattern and also one more thing I wanted to share from what I know from this the context here is most of these accidents, whenever they happen, the uh, elephants, I, I, I don't know any incident where the elephant has survived and moved on with its life. Okay. They've either uh, passed away a few days later or a week later, but that's it. So I was a little surprised when uh, the data showed 47 elephants injured uh, in one of your slides. Um, that yeah, was a little so... <laughs> surprising. Yeah, Maybe the train. This is yeah, like... I, the uh this thing news reports the way they write it is kind of injured sometimes the elephant passes like afterwards or the day after um i feel like i read it's called pinawala elephant orphanage or there is one rescue uh center it's like a rescue center in uh, sri lanka where i know that like the orphan elephants or orphaned elephants are taken and rescued and like you know they're taken there um where i believe like what things i've read like what, at least one or two of the elephant calves that survived um may have been taken there mm -hmm. um i i cannot like like the the data that i got is based on like okay. also no, um, I that's the second secondary data that yeah. Yeah, secondary data. Yeah, only so much you can do. But yeah, this is great. Thanks for the amazing. Uh, Kartik and on such a question. So his question is, uh, whoever's wondering, can you please make me. Uh, so, uh, Kartik and's question is, uh, can the drone cameras help spot elephants near railway tracks so that the train drivers can be informed? Um, I think drones. It's maybe a possibility. I don't know how much research has been done with drones, but you also have to consider like realistically, drones are expensive. Um, it might not always work. They might like land somewhere. So before like implementing something, um, it, you have to also think about it realistically if it's going to work or not. 
so like I I don't really know about drones that much like I I didn't really come across much about drones but it could be out there at least like during the last two years uh Panjali also has a question so uh yeah, it's not actually a question. I just wanted to be uh, the rescue center that she was talking about is called uh, the Udawalave Elephant Transit Home. And uh, that's the only rescue center that is uh, that is now operating in Sri Lanka. And like uh, the other, um, the person that you, that raised the question said, even I have not heard much of any uh, elephants surviving after a railway collisions, most of them die, right? And about drones, uh, most of the wilderness areas, uh, you're not allowed to actually run drones over the wilderness areas, right? So, uh, so that's going to be a challenge to, in using drones as well. I'm actually Panchali from Sri Lanka, yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm um, from an organization called Raya Sri Lanka. Uh, thanks for thanks for that, Panjali. So, any more final okay. questions? Okay. Welcome. Bye. Uh, yep. I don't think anyone has any questions remaining. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, there's one more. How effect, how effective is the first responder service after train collisions? Train responder service. Um. I I'm not sure, but like if you send me your email, maybe I can get back to you. I, I haven't really looked into that, so I'm I'm not really sure. Uh any more questions? Yep. Uh I think that's about it. So thank you, Samia, for the um presentation. So I think it's good if you can just put your email ID in the uh, oh, chat, yeah. just, just, just in case somebody has any questions to ask you. Uh, in the chat, I've also sent a link. So if you, if any of you want to give a webinar presentation, then just fill up the form. Uh, yep, that's about it. Any final questions? Nope, so I guess we can just end the webinar then. Thanks so much for inviting me. It was fun.